friends, how are you? Happy Wednesday. It's been a hot minute since we've done one of these and we're having some technical troubles with our camera. So if I appear a little blurry, I think that's gonna be part of the course today. Um, the autofocus on my camera isn't working, but we're just gonna wing it and go with it. I hope you guys are having such an amazing summer. Let me get myself set up over here. Um, I would love it if you would chime in and say hi, tell me where you guys are from. Um, I was listening to some, or I was reading some comments from some people. I'm looking over here because my, my big screen's over here. I was looking at some people, uh, some comments earlier today about people who've been using the Simplified Planner for six years. That's amazing. So I'd love to know what number Simplified Planner you are on while I get this all set up. Let's see. Oh, hey, look at that. All right. Oh my gosh, I can see your comments so big. Hi guys. One day I'm going to figure out how to do this where the screen's behind the camera and I don't have to look over here, but for now we're going to go with it. Um, as we go today, like I said a minute ago, we're having tech problems with my camera and it's not focusing right. It wants to focus on this thing behind me and I'm not savvy enough to figure out how to fix it yet. So um, we will post some pictures of what I'm talking about later today because I know we've taken some pictures of some of these pages and we'll post them on social media for you. Um, but just follow along, get your simplified planner, and let's get started, all right? Um, first of all, I have to tell you, this dress I'm wearing is the best summer dress ever. I just got it yesterday. It's from Target. Uh, I think I'll post a link to it later, but you got to go to Target and get, look, it's long. It's so cute. All right, since we're all friends here, I just have to share that. Okay, so guys, can you believe it's July, like mid-July? And we are starting August 1st, starting in our academic simplified planners in like two weeks. I can't believe it. I feel like we just started summer mode over here and um, it's been an awesome summer. It's been a slow summer over here. It's been a time of just um, relaxing a lot and reconnecting with some of the basics in our home, getting some rhythm in place for the summer so that my kids can get all their energy out and we can still survive in a, without the, you know, the school routine and all of that. But as school starts to approach, whether you're a teacher or a student or um, you are a mom of kids who are going back to school, we all start to think about you know, implementing those routines and those rhythms back into life to uh, really hit the ground running for the school year. If you are new, and I know there's many, many, many new people here, um, uh, I'll go ahead and explain some of the basics of the Signature Simplified Planners so that you understand the difference between what we're talking about now and what we're going to talk about in December. And yes, for those of you who are going to have calendar year editions, we will do another one of these in December and hopefully my auto zoom focus thing will be working then. Um, but we have two launches every year of the Simplified Planner, the Signature Simplified Planners. We have a launch in the spring, which was only did in April. And that's for our planners that we're talking about now that are dated August of this year through July of next year. And then um, in September, on September 4th, we'll be releasing our calendar year editions. And those are dated next January through the following December. So two different signature simplified planners, same covers, you know, same weekly and daily options, and they're just dated differently. So one begins August 1st. One begins January 1st. Again, if you're looking for the calendar year editions, those launch September 4th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, so this is for those of you that are beginning your year with the school year. Um, I know lots of school calendars are different. We all start at different times. But for the most part, August 1st is when a lot of us are starting to think about getting back into the swing of things. And if you're like me, when that time rolls around, I'm already feeling the itch a little bit, if I'm being honest. Um, but when that time rolls around, we, um, you know, we start thinking about how we can get back into meal planning, how we can get back into some kind of, you know, exercise or wellness routine, how we can get our kids back on track and off the like late bedtimes. And with my kids, I feel like just this week, especially we've been getting back to like eating better and vacation mode. Uh, when you're on vacation, it's kind of like anything goes. So we're excited to get back into the swing of things. And I have a bunch of signature simplified planners here that um, I'm going to show you some pages. Like I said, we'll post pictures later. But if you have yours, today's the day that we're going to move in. Um, 
To get started, I want you to make sure you have your Signature Simplify Planner with you. And I want you to make a note, if you have not already done this, to go and download our Perpetual Calendar, which is over in our free printable library, emilylay.com. Um, that Perpetual Calendar, I think one of my team will post, um, will post the link here. Y'all, this is so cool. I can see your comments big now over on the screen. It used to be that they were really little, and now they're like really big. So hi to everybody. Many friends from Orlando. This is so great. Um, someone said, love the planner, but love all the resources like the lives and the printables. Yes, if you have not checked out all of the resources, y'all, we have years upon years of resources for you. In the video library, you can see all these past lives that we've done. Um, you can see me in many different hairstyles and hair colors. <laughs> you can also go to the free printable library and print out, I think there's up to 40 printables there now. We even have some for teachers now that we have our simplified teacher planner. And before I forget to tell you, today is double Pineapple Points Day. So Pineapple Points is kind of like our referral and reward system over on our website. And today is double Points Day, just until midnight tonight. So um, go over there and check that out. We, we also have, I think, um, if you go over to our site, there's a link. If you click up at the top somewhere, you can get to the Pineapple Points page and read all about it. Okay, who's excited? I want to talk to you about the Perpetual Calendar first, because it's not part of the Simplified Planner. But the Perpetual Calendar is something that we created. Um, really, I created because it was the way that I was moving from planner to planner to planner. Um, you know, when you sit down with a new planner and you start thinking about, you know, how do I want to start this? We all get those itchy feelings of my handwriting's not good enough. It's so beautiful. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want it like I have to do it right. I have to do it perfectly. Like, what if I mess it up? The good news is you get a fresh start every week or every day, depending on which edition you're using daily or weekly. So we don't care if you get it messy. We hope you will take your time to get it messy and not worry about it. Don't worry about having the perfect handwriting and making it as amazing as the photos you see on Instagram. Don't worry about that. Make your simplified planner your own. Um, that's why we made the simplified planner the way it is. Super, super simple on purpose so you could get it messy. All right, back to perpetual calendar. When I was moving from planner to planner, I felt like I needed a place where I could just keep all those dates that I was searching for when I started a new planner. I would start, you know, with, with one, moving into another, these are this year's editions, but pretend like this is old. I would start, you know, with one, moving into another, and I would think, okay, I gotta go find all the birthdays, and I gotta go find all of the anniversaries, and I gotta go find all the dates that I need to put in here. With the perpetual calendar, what it is, is it's one sheet, you just print it out once, and it says January, line, 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 line. February, line, 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 line. March, line, line, line. And it goes all the way through all 12 months, and those lines are for you to put your perpetual important dates. So your mom's birthday, your wedding anniversary, whatever. Whatever those dates are, um, you put those down and those are the dates that don't change and will always need to be in your planner when you start to set it up. So that's why it's called a perpetual calendar. It doesn't change. Um, if it's a date that changes, obviously don't put it down there. If it is a major holiday, uh, at least a major US holiday, you're gonna have it in your planner already, don't worry about those. Anniversaries, birthdays, um, important days. Um, when I first did this, when I first started with the perpetual calendar, I put down all of the big important days, like my family's birthdays, my family's wedding anniversaries, and basically that was it. When we moved from Tampa to Pensacola last summer, um, it was, a hard, it was a hard and awesome move, but we left a lot of friends in Tampa. And it was so important to me to like keep in touch with them and, you know, love on those relationships so that we could carry with them, carry them with us and not, you know, be gone. So what I did is I, when I started that perpetual calendar, I started over because I wanted to add some things to it. Um, I text a whole bunch of friends and I was like, I need your birthday. I need your kids' birthdays. And um, I added them all to this perpetual calendar. And then um, now I have like a place to refer back to if I'm buying birthday cards and things like that. Just stick it in the front pocket of your Simplify Planner. Um, but that's the thing I use now to move in to my new planner. So 
Make sure you print out the perpetual calendar. I'm sure some, oh, hi, hi, Dusty. Yeah, Dusty, yours is one of the, your kids are one of the birthdays, some of the birthdays I put on those. Um, oh, thanks, someone posted the, the link to download it. But yes, if you guys can uh, go and download that and print it out, make sure you do this before you set up your Simplified Planner, okay? This is super important, just so you make sure that you're, you're starting out with everything you need, okay? So that's point number one. Go get that perpetual calendar, print it out. If you've already done this, awesome. You're ahead of the game, you're ready to go, and setting this thing up is gonna be a breeze. Honestly, setting this thing up should be simple. It should be something that is easy, that you can easily do every year or every six months or whenever you start a new planner um, to do. Okay, so you've got your perpetual calendar, you've got all the dates there, and we are going to start flipping the pages. Don't get that pen out yet. We don't write anything down yet, okay? I have post-it notes in here because I have pages to show you that may, may or may not come into focus with this crazy camera today. Um, yeah, I saw someone say the background's in focus, but Emily's fuzzy. It's because my camera has a mind of its own today. We're just going to go with it, okay? We're just going to go with it. Um, we'll post some pictures on Instagram later of some of the pages we show you, but um, ignore the fact that I'm fuzzy. Who knows? It might be for the best. <laughs> Okay, don't write a thing, okay? And if you, by the way, if you have questions as we go today, put them in the comments and we're gonna gather all those questions. My whole team is here today and they're gonna be texting me um, all the questions at the end and I'll make sure I answer all of them. I also have some questions from yesterday that uh, I took note of on, on Instagram, so I'll be sure to answer those as well. All right, inside your Simplified Planner, your Signature Simplified Planner, this is the weekly edition and this is the daily edition. Um, can my team tell me which ones are sold out? I think Blue Stripe or Blue Pinstripe is sold out in both editions, right? Um, I just want to make sure I give the right information. Um, so if you see me holding this one up, you can get it with the calendar year editions in September, but this one's sold like hotcakes. Okay. And this is uh, Navy Blooms, which is beautiful. All right. So weekly, daily for anybody who's new. Um, when you get started, pocket in the front, stick your perpetual calendar right in there. Okay. That's where you're going to keep it when you're done with it. That's where you're going to refer back to every month when you go to buy those birthday cards or send that text message to say happy birthday or whatever. That's where you have all that stuff right there. Um, I suggest, you know, when you, when you do start adding those, this is a question I got like 500 of last night. So I'm going to just tell you now before we even get to it, you're going to write those on the month and the week and or day. Okay. All right, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, all right, so as you get started, you will see, let's all flip to this page. Um, I'm going to pretend like you all already have your simplified planners are ready to go. Uh, flip to this page that says the process of simplifying right over here. What we have here is something, this is a page that is in the signature simplified planner that never, ever, ever changes. Um, the the process of simplifying is something that was so important to us to put in this planner because we don't want you to just sit down and have a cute agenda to start with. We don't want you to just sit down and have a place to put dates. We want you to sit down with that thirst that we all have right now in the middle of summer, getting ready to start a new year, that thirst for a simpler life, right? That thirst for things to slow down a little bit, to get back into a little more rhythm, um, to simplify, you know, the must do's of life, the chores, the house stuff, the kids stuff, the appointments, the work, so that we can make space and time for the good stuff, right? And so that's our goal when we're sitting down to do this. I'm not here to teach you how to write dates on a calendar. You know how to do that. What I'm doing here is I want you to sit down with a clear head and the willingness to step into something new, the willingness to do a little bit of work to simplify life so that we can make space for the good stuff. I just wrote a book. It is like the biggest part of my heart ever. I'm gonna be sharing all the details on August 5th. Um, it's called When Less Becomes More and it is about this very thing. Um, it is about walking a season of extreme busyness of burnout, overwhelm, that led to emptiness, really, and in what it looks like to emerge from that and to embrace a life that's 
honest to goodness simpler, not just in a planner or on our calendars, but like in the very heart of my family, simpler. And so when we talk about the process of simplifying, I'm not talking about just making your planner pretty. I'm talking about really making actual life changes. That's what makes the simplified planner different from all the other planners out there. All right. Step number one, name what matters. So I'm going to, this is interactive. Um, and I would love to have some feedback from you guys. I would love for you to answer some of these questions as we go. Um, this is how we're going to get prepared to actually use our planner. We're going to answer some hard questions. Okay. So number one, name what matters. And I'm going to just read you a little bit from this page. Often we think we can tackle everything in one day, right? We think we can do it all, be it all, perfectly, in heels, good hair, we're super skinny, we work out all the time, our kids are great, they're well behaved, and we are like killing it at work and our laundry never piles up. Who lives like that, right? I, I read books about this stuff, I don't live like that. Um, I've learned that that's out of reach, but we think we can do it all in one day because social media and television and everything else tells us that everyone else is, right? Everyone else's life is really perfect and put together and ours is a little bit frazzled and tough sometimes. Well, I'm here to tell you nobody's life is perfect. It's hard, but we can't do it all. We can do some things. And we can do many things, but we can't do it all, and we can't do it all well, and we can't do it all at the same time. So you have to name what matters. We can't be everything to everyone. The first step in simplifying is to identify what you will regret at the end of this year, okay? This planner represents 12 months of your life. When you get to the next, you know, when you get to next July 17th, and you're looking back at that year, of that year of your kid's school age, of that year of teaching, of that year of, of your life, what will you say, man, I kind of wish we had done that. You know, I kind of wish I had made time for friends more. I kind of wish I had had more bandwidth to be more patient with my kids. You know, I wish I had made time to work out twice a week, three times a week. I bet I'd feel better now. Those are the things that matter, and those are the things that we're going to claim as we do this. Um, these priorities could be anything, right? But we're going to define that top priority over all the roles and responsibilities that require our attention throughout every day. These can include things like your spouse, children, families, parents, careers, entrepreneurial endeavors, home, church, volunteering, whatever. Whatever that is to you. It doesn't have to be the same answer as mine. Whatever that is to you, you claim it. So I want to know what's your number one. I want, to, I want you to tell me in the comments, um, what's your number one? I want to know what that one thing is that you're going to focus on this year, that you're going to make space for, that you're going to make time for, and I'm going to tell you mine. And I haven't prepared this at all, so I'm going to think. Mine for this year, I think mine for this year is going to be um, a season, I'm going to focus on having a season of living with, of living well, I think is the word I want to use. I want to focus on a season of living well, of taking care of myself, of truly embracing this lesson I've learned that's, that I've written a book about, that's hard for me to do sometimes, of less. Um, I feel like a lot of times I'm chasing more, like the next thing, the next best thing, the next cool thing, you know? And I think I want to, I want to settle down and embrace where I am right now and live life live life well and healthy. That's a big one. I just saw um, Bianca say that. Self-care, my number one in naming what matters. Um, if you are if you guys are having sound troubles or anything like that, try switching to Google Chrome. That might help. Uh, intentional playtime with my family, health and wellness, patience not just with others but with myself. Yes, patience with myself. Oh, that's good. I want to embrace the right now, the healthy and simple. I love that. Uh, my husband and children, family time, self-care. I need a season of calm. Yes, Gail. Yes. And I know that going into this next year, releasing this book and having a big year in business, um, that it's, it could very easily spiral into very, very busy. Um, but I have two four-year-olds and an eight-year-old. We live in our hometown, finally. 
Um, there's a lot of things calling at my attention and I am really going to name like the thing that matters is going to be the five people that live at this house and I'm going to focus on them. Um, I, I got brave this year, especially with the summer and saying like, I'm going to work on summer mode. Our team's going to work on summer mode. We're going to get the things done for work. But we're going to play and we're going to say no to things and we're going to like refuel and have a season of replenishment. And I'm claiming that. Um, oh, someone just said, would love to hear your thoughts on how you see planners helping supporting an empty nest mama when there are no more kiddos in the house and the daily schedule completely changes. So my mom, we all know and love her as Nana. She uses a planner. She's no kids at home. My brother and I are both full on the coop and she uses her planner religiously. She uses the weekly and, um, she especially uses it for meal planning because she loves cooking and her schedule changes every day, but she kind of keeps it all there. And it's, it's kind of simple, right? Don't overthink it. Um, we made this so that you can use it in any season of life. All right. So, amen, saying no, space for less. Yes. I'm ready to enjoy my life. Do you ever feel like you're just constantly going from, like, point A to point B to point C to point D and, like, checking the boxes? Yeah. You know? Um, I'm ready to, like, stop and save her point A and then point B when I get there, you know? Okay, naming what matters. Number two, <clears throat> eliminate distractions. This is a really, really, really big one. Um, it's very easy to be like, oh, my distractions, you know, it's social, it's social media, it's, um, you know, my phone, it's X, Y, Z, distractions. It's easy for us to like kind of say like, oh, this is what they are and this is what it is for everybody. But like, what actually are your distractions? Be real. What are your distractions? Distractions are the number one reason we feel we do not have enough minutes in the day. They're the big and small things that creep in and steal our time. We say we don't have time to go have coffee with a friend. We say we don't have time to get on the floor and play a board game with our kids. We say we don't have time to work out. But really, we do. We all have 24 hours and what are we spending them on, right? I'd love to know what your distractions are <laughs> over here in the comments. I would love to know what your distractions are. Um, before you begin planning your days with a simplified planner, take a look at a normal day. Take a look at what a normal day looks like for you and consider how much time you're spending on what and how, you know, what are those things? We're not going to talk about yet how to simplify them or get rid of them, but like, what are they? Um, social media? Absolutely. Um, absolutely, absolutely is a big one. Facebook, I have found that I um, will get kind of lost in my in my phone sometimes. And when I took a sabbatical from social media to write this book in January of this year, life changing, literally life changing. Um, I wrote a lot about it in the book as I was off of social media, and it was it was literally life changing. Um, clutter, absolutely, absolutely. Um, emails, my phone, absolutely. Okay, number three, establish routines. Begin establishing routines, traditions, and habits to create automation in your life. At first, this will feel like work. As we start to establish a meal planning routine, a laundry routine. Um, I feel like as women, we don't talk about the mundane parts of life enough. And that's what I'm here to do. Um, we all struggle with laundry. I love having my girlfriends over with their kids and being like, how do you do laundry? Like, when do you do it? What, like, in your house, who who folds it? Who puts it away? And these are questions you just don't and you just don't ask. But I ask because I'm so interested to know how other people get those things done because they're such a pain. <laughs> laundry is awful, and meal planning is the hardest thing for me because I don't enjoy cooking. I really want to, but I don't. And so I love hearing how other people do it. And when I start to try and implement a routine, which I've done and it's obviously made such a huge difference, when I start to implement those routines, they sometimes feel like work, but that's the work of creating a habit. And once you do it over and over again a couple times, eventually it just becomes part of your routine. It becomes flexible, changeable, but at first it does feel like work. And they obviously make our days run smoother. Meal planning on Sundays, laying out your clothes in the evening, having a monthly sit-down meeting with your spouse to go over the calendar. We do this, and it makes a big difference. Meal planning changed my life. Um, 
Absolutely. And I love, I have to also say, the Simplified Sisterhood Facebook group is 25,000 or something strong. It might even be more than that. I'm not sure. Um, that group has been so great for sharing tactical ideas about laundry, about meal planning, about handling technology in your home, especially with kids, um, about clutter and what to do with it. If you're interested in a deeper dive into these things, my uh, second book, A Simplified Life, which you can't see, but it's in here. A Simplified Life is um, exactly this. It's very, very tactical about 10 areas of life that get overwhelming for us. And it's $2.99 on Kindle right now. Just remember that. All right. Number four, choose what matters. This is the trick to simplifying. You can write it down. You can do all the prep work in the world. You can, you know, buy every cookbook out there and make a meal plan and all that. But at the end of the day, if you don't choose it, if you don't choose that first thing that we talked about, they won't happen, right? When, it, when push comes to shove, we have to choose the thing that matters. You have a choice for how you will spend the next 12 months, right? And that's beautiful. We all have the choice of how we will spend the next 12 months. We can choose to spend it with our hair on fire. I've done that. It's terrible. Don't do it. Um, we can choose to overcommit and expend our, or spend everything we have and have nothing left to give for ourselves. We can choose to live life in a constant state of grumpiness because we're overwhelmed all the time. I've done that too. Um, or we can choose to settle down, to identify the non-negotiables in our life, to set healthy boundaries, and to do the work to create routines that are healthy and help us thrive. So much of what I'm saying has to do with thriving, not just surviving. Can I just get a show of hands of people who feel like they're surviving right now? I mean, and let's be honest, I would love to know if you are thriving or surviving. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm I feel like I'm thriving right now. And that's only because I've done a lot of work in this stuff. Um, but I've had many seasons of just surviving, of just trying to keep my head above water. And I think that there are many, many, many seasons that that's just what it is. <laughs> Having newborn twins, you're surviving. And if you're surviving, you're doing a good job in a situation like that. You know, if you're dealing with an illness of some sort or have something else like that going on, and you're surviving, that's commendable. But if you're in a place where you know that you are able to thrive, you're just not there yet, I want to encourage you to claim that. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how many people are saying surviving. But yes, I agree. Ugh, y'all. I know we're talking about planners here, but these aren't just planners. You don't have to live your life with your hair on fire. You just don't. You just don't. I don't care. I don't care any situation you're in. You don't have to live your life with your hair on fire. Even if you have newborn twins. Looking back at Emily of, you know, four years ago, I'm glad I survived that. It was hard. I had a four-year-old and infant twins, and it was. And they, my husband and I always say we thought God would give us at least one kid that was like the wallflower, the quiet one. No. We got three kids with big personalities, loud opinions, funny, just, I mean, they're a lot. They're extra, and they're awesome. Um, but that season was hard. And so if I could say anything to that girl that was surviving that season, I would say, you don't have to do it all. Your laundry can pile up. You can have peanut butter and jelly for dinner. That's great, right? You can thrive in those surviving seasons. Um, but those are the four steps of simplifying. That's what we're going to do. We're going to name what matters. We're going to figure out those distractions. We're going to write them down. We're going to call them out. And then we are going to put routines into place to help our lives run a little smoother. And at the end of the day, whether you're thriving or surviving, you're going to choose what matters and you're going to move forward with that. And we are here to cheer you on. All right. Now, <laughs> I love how many, I love how many of you guys are saying we have, we have a lot of kids like that. Yeah, man. I don't know. I actually thought one of my kids was going to be the quiet one and I thought I had him pegged. No, not at all. And I, and I love them. I wouldn't change it for the world, but man, they're loud. Okay. 
Next page, how to use your simplified planner. We're gonna go quickly through this page so we can get into the tactical stuff of like setting this thing up and getting ready to use it. Um, now, this planner, you're gonna use it every day, I hope, for the next 12 months, all right? If you skip a day or you miss a day or you miss a week because you go on vacation, whatever, who cares? Use those pages as notes pages. Use, let your kids color on those pages. Use that space to write down notes from a meeting or whatever. Don't beat yourself up. Um, but your planner's not gonna work if you don't use it. If you put this on the shelf and you let it sit there, it's not gonna change your life. No planner, this one or any of those other ones out there, none of them are gonna change your life unless you do the work, unless you commit to using it. You put it in a place you're actually gonna use it. You let it get dirty. You let it get banged up. You let, you cross things out and scribble them out and white out and whatever. Use post-it notes, use stickers, use washi tape, use paper clips, use whatever, you, don't use any of that. Use a black pen, who cares? Use whatever you want to use to make this yours. But if you don't do the work, it's not going to do the work for you. Get it messy, okay? Um, I would like all of you, <laughs> Gail knew it was Tyler I was talking about, I would like all of you to promise me here that you're going to get your planner messy before I tell you how to fill it out, okay? Promise me that you're gonna get it messy, all right? Um, all right, okay, here we go. Number one, do your prep work, okay? Um, I'm gonna just briefly cover prep work and then we're gonna dive into it. Do your prep work, think about what's most important to you, why do you need a clean slate, <clears throat> what is this a fresh start from? Um, number two, add birthdays and anniversaries, use that perpetual calendar, then add reminders. This is one of my favorite tips to add reminders. So if you write down mom's birthday is on, you know, March 1st, then you're gonna back up to February 15th or whenever and you're gonna say, make yourself a to-do, go shopping for mom's birthday gift or whatever. Um, if it's your wedding anniversary, you're gonna write down something, you know, a couple weeks before, you know, maybe write a sweet letter to my spouse or whatever. Write those reminders down and when you get to those days where you wrote those reminders down, as you set it up, you're going to be like, ah, I'm so glad I did that. One of the things that I do, one of the reminders I write down is um, on the 15th of the month, every month, I write down get birthday cards for the next month. So like February 15th, I'll go shopping for birthday cards for March and, and write notes and pop them in the mail. Um, it's just another way to like nurture those friendships and relationships that I put down on that perpetual calendar, right? And then when I go birthday card shopping, I just pull that perpetual calendar out and it has all the, it has the list of birthdays. I can just know how many cards and who I'm shopping for. All right, just a tip. Uh, number three, add reminders. Nope, we did that. Uh, number four, make time and get messy. We covered that. You promised. I see it. You promised. Um, and you're going to claim what that is. And I want you to also think about as we begin to put stuff on pages in here, don't feel like you have to fill it up, okay? I know you guys have all seen those Instagram pictures from all over the world of beautifully filled out planners. Mine rarely looks like that. Mine is usually pretty messy. Um, mine oftentimes has a lot of white space on the page. And sometimes I feel this itch to like fill it with something because then it'll be prettier or I'll feel more accomplished or something. Um, and I've learned over the years that that white space is worth its weight in gold in my life. So cherish that white space, protect the white space. Don't feel like your planner has to be Instagram worthy to share with the rest of the world. You, nobody has to see your planner, just you. Um, obviously we love it if you share it, we love to see it. But if your real life looks, you know, if you don't wanna share it, you don't have to share it. Don't feel like that. You make it work for you. If you wanna change some of the sections to be something else, do that. That's how we made it simple on purpose. You can make it work for your season of life, no matter what it is um, that you're in. Now, last thing, caring for your simplified planner. It's a book, right? It can get dinged up. It can get scratched. It can get whatever. Make sure that you're keeping this in a safe place. You're keeping it out of the reach of little hands. Yes, that will happen. Somebody will spill chocolate milk on it. Somebody will scribble in it. That's fine. You can wipe it off. 
Um, a magic eraser, eraser, if you get something on the cover, a magic eraser will easily just take things off. Um, yes, the gold, we have a very protective coating on the cover, but the gold will wear if you are constantly, you know, shuffling around with other books and things like that. So just take care of it. Keep it in a safe spot. Um, make sure I got everything on that page. Yep. Okay. And after that, it's probably not going to focus, but you can see the, um, you can see the entire year here and then all the holidays. And then we're going to move into the prep work. This is the most important part of setting up your simplified planner. So if you will all turn with me to the page that says preparing for a new year, this is where we are really going to take some time. We are not going to fill this out today on this workshop because I want you guys to take an hour, two hours, however much time you can carve out. And I want you to get alone and pour a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or whatever and sit down with a pen, with whatever accessories you want to decorate your planner with, sit down and I want you to pour your heart into these pages. The simplified prep work is something we added about a year, maybe two years ago, and it has transformed the simplified planner, if you ask me. Um, I love the idea of starting this planner with a heart change and not just putting all your dates in and using it as a regular agenda. And so this is where the heart change begins. This is where we're gonna work through the things that we just talked about over here. Um, and I'm just gonna quickly go through these pages because I wanna to get to some examples and answer some questions. And I just realized it's already getting close to time to wrap this up. Um, again, if you have questions, please put them in. I'm gonna to try to wrap up this portion of it in about five minutes and then we'll get to lots and lots of questions. Um, Preparing for a new year. We are going to talk about what worked last year and what didn't work last year, okay? In this case, we're looking back at the last school year. What worked, what didn't, what routines, you know, did you have a, a carpool situation or a drop-off situation? My husband takes my kids to school and I pick them up. That really works for us, like, really, really well because I'm able to, like, get my day started as soon as they walk out the door. Um, what didn't work last year, over committing to extracurriculars, that did not work. <laughs> um, you know, what was it that worked, what didn't work? And then at the bottom of this page, ideas for new routines and healthy habits. Two great resources, again, Simplified Sisterhood um, Facebook group, and also A Simplified Life, the book, great for ideas for new routines and healthy habits in terms of self-care, homekeeping, managing a family, um, that sort of thing. On the next page, we're going to talk about routines. So this is a weekly routine. We have Mondays through Sundays. You know, are you doing laundry every single day? Are you doing it only on Wednesdays and Sundays? Are you doing, uh, are you meal planning on Fridays so that you can go to the grocery store while your kids are in school and be ready to go for the next week? That's what I've started doing. And it's been actually really, really nice. Um, and then morning and evening routine. Um, I have just now gotten into like a good skincare routine and I've been like morning and evening, like really staying committed to my skincare routine um, because I'm getting older and I want to take care of it and I'm in the sun all the time. So I want to make sure I wear sunscreen and it's just one of those like felt silly things that like, why can't I, I just need to get consistent with it. And so I just decided to be serious about it. I want to not have skin damage and I want to, you know, take care of my skin. And so I wrote down my morning and evening skincare routine on a post-it. It's inside my little vanity cabinet in my bathroom. And I know which steps to go through. I know by heart now, but um, I make sure I'm getting SPF on in the morning. I'm using moisturizer at night and that kind of thing. Um, it sounds silly. Again, it's one of those things that like, why, did, why don't we talk about these things? I think they're important. Um, but if you, if you start doing it and you implement the routine, it quickly becomes a habit and can change your life, right? All right, next is the simplicity challenge. This we decided to put in the Signature Simplified Planners because it is so special and important and just such an awesome way to kickstart a simplified life. Um, this includes, I think it's 30 or 31 steps that each take under 15 minutes and they're super easy. Just a nice way to like quick start that simplified life starts off with walk your house with a trash bag. Every simplicity challenge we ever do will include this specific step because it's life changing. Just 
Walk your house with a trash bag and pick up trash. Walk it with a donate bag, pick up stuff to donate that you know needs to go. An immediate way to clear clutter and just get your head in the right space, right? Um, that is super awesome. And while we're on the topic of simplicity challenges, we are doing a back to school edition of the simplicity challenge. It's a mini, so I think it's two weeks long, but we're starting at August 1st with the start of your planners. So join us on Instagram and Facebook for that. I can't wait. Um, I wrote a lot of the steps and then my mom actually helped me with a lot and then our team gave a lot of ideas too. So um, make sure you stick around and look out for that. Next page is your yearly bucket list. You're going to write down those things, like we said, at the end of the 12 months that you want to look back and say, I'm so glad I did this. I'm so glad that I did that. Um, you're going to check them off only when you schedule them in your plan. All right, next, this year's um, simplified, signature simplified planners have four notes pages. You can use these for anything you want. I'm using mine as a list of go-to meals, meals that, because meal planning is hard for me, I like to keep a list of healthy, family approved, awesome, easy to make meals. And I keep them all in my planner right here. And I can just flip back and kind of go through. I've also started as of this summer, keeping a list of activities to do with kids that are easy, that we always have stuff for when things start to come unraveled or we need something to do. Um, I know that I can go there and be like, oh, throw all the kids in a bathtub with popsicles. Such a fun and easy thing to do right? Or um, put a bunch of shaving cream on the table and let them write le their letters. Um, so keep a list of that busy toddler on Instagram will change your life if you're looking for things like that. Okay. And then you got, uh, then you move into the monthly and or you move into monthly spreads and the weekly or daily spreads. And that is where we're going to start putting dates on the calendar um, in our planners. So again, my camera's not working right. But I'm just going to show you some example pages that we've made. Um, you can see a lot of these on Instagram, uh, on our simplified Instagram account. You can see a lot of pictures of these kinds of pages. But this is just examples of ways to set up a planner, what it looks like inside the weekly or the daily. You have headline space, we call it, at the top right of every day. And so that is where you would write an all-day event, like a birthday or an anniversary at the top right. Um, and then let's see. Okay. I just want to answer a question that I've been getting a ton of over the summer. Early in the summer, I told you guys that I sat down with a bunch of simplified planners. It was these and we we're having a photo shoot and I wanted to just to give myself the freedom to play. I just wanted to sit down with some stickers and some pens and I just wanted to like play with setups, different ways to use a simplified planner for more than just an agenda. 99% of the people who use planners at all, any planner, are using it the way we've been talking about, as an agenda, a place to put all the things, um, a place to just keep track of everything. But I wanted to sit down and see what it would be like to use a secondary planner, to use a second one. Because we had so many people telling us, so many of our customers telling us they were using two. And for years, I was like, that's not simplified. There's just no way. This does not sound like a good idea. Using two planners, this is, I, just can't, I couldn't wrap my head around it for the longest time until I gave myself permission to sit down and play. Now, perks of the job, I have a lot of them around. So I, <laughs> it was very easy for me to just sit down and start playing with some. And I discovered so many ways to use them. Just so many ways that just came out of me of like, what if I'm just using this particular planner as a meal planner? What if, if that's the thing that's so hard for me, what if I pulled that stuff out of my regular planner and I put it in just a planner just for that? So I have space to just focus. Mind blown. I shared it on social media and so many people were like, A, oh my gosh, I've been doing this. Or B, this is the best thing I've ever heard of. They were so excited. And we got so much feedback and I've seen so many people post pictures so I'm just going to tell you really quickly while we're here how to do that. If you are interested in using the plan, the planner that you have just for that, or if you want a second one to use just for that, I'm using the weekly just for that. Okay. I use the daily day to day because I need a lot of space, but the weekly, um, again, we'll post a picture because I'm sure this isn't going to zoom correct or focus correctly. What we did or what I did is I, just for decorations purpose, and because I'm such a visual person, I put 
some of our variety stickers. Um, they're the little flags with the gold on them. I just put one on each um, day and they're color coordinated. And that's where the meal is. It's in the, the schedule section, okay, over here. So over here I have taco bowls on this side. It just says taco bowls. Over here, I wrote the ingredients. So this is usually like your to-do list. I wrote the ingredients I would need. And then I took my, I did it on every day. And then I took my planner to the pantry in the fridge and I checked off the things I already had. And then I had my grocery list. Done, right? Mind blowing. Okay, Saturday and Sunday, I typically don't plan meals for those days. So we typically like, we'll go out to eat or eat leftovers or order pizza. Um, so I use those spaces, especially in the weekly, they're smaller. I use those spaces to just put other groceries we needed, like milk and bread for lunches and things like that. Um, Y'all, I'm not even kidding. It'll change your life. Seriously. I also, in this secondary planner, have been keeping just one, one line for what activity we're going to do that day with the kids. Um, my kids went to like half day camp, every, almost, not every day, but a lot of days this summer. And um, in the afternoons, they would come home and we'd have lunch together and then we would do some sort of activity. And I would just write a note of what that was going to be, right? And I just kept it here. Um, just so good. It's life changing. Not even kidding you. Um, okay, so that answers the question about how to use a secondary planner. Another way I've seen people use it is as a fitness tracker. So um, this is a monthly spread where I just wrote and color coded, you know, what to do every day of the week, rest days, swim days, yoga days. I wish this was my actual exercise schedule. This is my goal for next year to, for this to be my, um, my actual exercise schedule. But what a great way to do it. And then just your color coding over here. I'm so visual that if I look at something like this, it's like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. And then you check it off or change things or whatnot. All right. I think I've shown you guys everything in this one. Again, this is just a, you know, basic weekly um, spread being used as an agenda. And Tiffany said memory keeping is another option. I have also seen that as well. Um daily edition. This is just a day. It's not going to focus. Sorry, guys. This is just a daily spread. Um, and then another daily spread. This is what my planner actually usually looks like where it's a lot more messy. <laughs> okay, guys, I think we've covered everything. Once you've written the birthdays and anniversaries and dates like that into your simplified planner, you are ready to hit the ground running. Um, Again, make sure that you're keeping it messy, you're making it part of your routine, whether you're checking it every night before the next day or checking it in the morning. Um, I often get asked questions like, well, what if I live XYZ life? What if I have XYZ children or no children or I'm this age or I have this job or this responsibility at home? Um, the reason the Simplified Planner is called the Simplified Planner is because Many, many, many years ago, when my first child was born, Brady, I was very overwhelmed. And I was looking for a planner or an organizer that would help me keep things together and would feel like a fresh start and not feel like a thing I had to do, another thing I could fail at. I needed something that would give me the space I needed to plan my days the way I needed them to be planned. And so basically I just needed space for my schedule, my to-do list and notes and like what we're having for dinner. So if you open a signature simplified planner, you will see you have a place for your schedule, your to-do list, and then you have a, a note on the daily page You have a note section and you can use that for dinner. You can use it for fitness. You can use it for whatever you want to use it for. We make the simplified planners simple on purpose because they we want you to use them for whatever your life looks like. And we have heard from women all over the world in many, many different seasons of life with many, many different schedules and responsibilities and family setups and whatnot. We have, we have seen them use these to make their lives simpler. The point is, it's not, you're not going to find like a magic setup that makes it work for you or a magic accessory that makes it work for you. You have to do the work. You have to get into this planner and put everything in it and commit to using it. And I promise you, if you embrace the principles we talked about in the beginning about naming what matters, 
choosing what matters, making sure you're embracing the white space and not trying to fill it up, and then have fun with it. Use the stickers, use the accessories, the washi tape, the pins, use whatever you want that fits into your life and makes you feel good. Use that and let it become part of your life. That's when you're gonna find that you're really able to live simpler. Okay, um, let's see. If you guys can send me any questions, looks like I have some questions. Oh, okay, Dusty says, to give a reminder, the August 1st Simplicity Challenge that I mentioned earlier is um, a two week long mini simplified challenge that is, um, or simplicity challenge that is going to be focused on back to school. So um, yes, it will be applicable if you don't have kids, but there are a lot of kid things in it. Um, it's a lot of things I'm doing in my own life to get our family ready to go back to school. Um, and that, yeah, that starts August 1st. All right. Uh, okay, Brittany says, blue pinstripe, both editions are sold out daily and weekly. The mint tile daily is running low. Um, so these, we never know which ones are going to sell out first. Blue pinstripe snuck up and sold out first. We are, we are, we love it. And we were surprised that it sold out first. So if you are interested in a signature simplified planner that starts August 1st, go and get it today because it's double pineapple points day. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, would Nana show a page of her planner on Instagram? It would help be helpful. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Nana, Nana keeps her planner all to herself. I'll ask her, but I know she uses it mostly for meal planning. So if you saw the meal planning one we post on Instagram, um, we'll share it later today, but the uh, that's how she uses it. But I'll ask her if she'll show it. Um, again, I think she's using it really just like anybody else is, using it for what she's having for dinner or what she and my dad are having for dinner, her to-do list for the day and what her schedule is. Um, all right. Share more on weekly planner use for meal planning. Did that. What are some of the best pens to use with the simplified planner? Um, our actual favorite pens to use with the signature simplified planner are the Pilot Precise V5. And whoop. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Uh, the Pilot Precise V5. We have a Happy Stripe pin set in our shop that you can go and, and buy there. And it comes with, I think, six or seven, I think it's seven different colors. And they are beautiful. They write really smooth. The paper inside the Signature Simplified Planners is super thick and awesome. And it doesn't bleed through or anything. These pins are great. Now, if you go back to our video library and watch, we have done two, I think, Ultimate Pen Tests on our signature simplified planners and you can see how all of our favorite pens behave on the paper. Um, I think it's been the most watched Facebook Live we've ever done. <laughs> so go and look at it. We're also, I think we're doing another one, guys. Are we doing another one? I think we're doing another one, pen test. So um, that'll happen closer to fall launch. If you're new, just to give you the lowdown on fall launch, um, our fall launch date is September 4th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. That is when we're going to be releasing some new products, as well as our calendar year signature simplified planners. So those are the ones dated to be in January 1st. And if you join us the week prior, we do all kinds of fun stuff. We do Facebook Lives, Instagram Lives, um, a launch day survival kit. It's so fun. Our whole team gets so excited about it. And then we hit the big red button on September 4th and launch all of these beauties out into the world. And uh, the pen test will be one of those Facebook Lives. Um, okay, good. Hannah reminded me. Yes, we're doing those. Um, we're doing another one during fall launch week. So yay, I'm so excited. Um, what else? Do you put your all-day events in the actual day and on the monthly calendar? Yes. So this is a question I got a lot last night on Instagram. When you have an all-day event, like a birthday or something, yes, I would put it on the month and the day and or week. Um, I use my monthly spreads for like a general overview of things that are going on, like somebody's out of town or there's a big thing at school or a big work thing. But on the daily or weekly, that's like the nitty gritty. Still, I need to know that information on both days. So if I were putting in birthdays and anniversaries and you're setting up your simplified planner, I would start with the monthly spreads. Go into the monthly spreads and write them all down and then go into the days or weeks and write them all down. So do yes, you do it twice. And I know that sounds like a lot, but you'll thank me as you use your simplified planner. All right. Somebody said, will the team 
be all together for launch. That was so fun to be part of. No, and I'm so sad about it. It was so fun to have everybody here. <laughs> it was so fun to have everybody here, and we're definitely going to do it again, but they will not all be here for lunch this time. But I promise that you'll get to see them all. We're going to be doing um, so many Facebook Lives and Instagram Lives, and who knows, maybe we'll find a way for all of us to, like, group in and do something fun. Mm. All right. What else? Um, can you add a launch day sticker so we can add it to our planner to prep? Oh, I love it. And Wit said there is one in the sticker book. So if you have our sticker book, um, it's all in there. Okay. Um, someone says, got to run. My planner tells me I have a commitment at 11 a.m. Yes, I actually got to run too. Um, but I'm just going to answer a few last questions. Um, how do you incorporate your e-calendar from work? So if you go back to our video library, you can watch a Facebook Live that I've done all about hybrid planning. And this is using an e-calendar like iCal or Google Calendar or whatever with a simplified planner. It is absolutely doable because I do it. I've been doing it for years. It totally works. It's a great system. All of our team is remote. They live all over the country. And my husband and I also share an iCal. So I have a team iCal, a family iCal. And what I do is on Sundays, I sit down and I look at my iCal and what I have going on. Again, have to have the digital thing because everybody's remote and we gotta share calendars. Um, and then I put everything on that iCal into my simplified planner for the next week, right? So that's like the daily things, the pick kit up here, whatever's due for work, that kind of thing. Put them on your simplified planner in the schedule space and then I fill out some to-dos and I make sure my week is kind of balanced and I've got some white space in there. That's my Sunday prep. So that's what I do on Sundays to make sure I'm set up for the week. If anything changes in, about my schedule during that week, if anybody needs to know about it, I'll change it on the night out. Otherwise, I'm working right out of that simplified planner for the whole entire week. Um, but yes, go and watch that. Um, yes, because they're great. That's a great Facebook Live. Okay. Uh, somebody said, would totally buy the Oh Happy Day launch day shirts. <laughs> That's fun. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up because we are right at time. But I want to end by telling you guys some important dates. So today is Double Pineapple Points Day. Go and shop emilylay.com and get double pineapple points. Um, you earn pineapple points. You can read all about it on the website. But basically, when you spend, you earn pineapple points to then accumulate. And they, you spend those in our shop, if that makes sense. Go read about it on our website. They'll do a much better job of explaining it. It's our referrals and rewards program. Also, um, we are going to be doing, let's see, our next thing is a Facebook Live on August 5th, and it will be me spilling my whole heart to you about my beloved next book, When Less Becomes More, Making Space for a Simple, Slow, and Good. Um, it is the biggest piece of my heart. And I have been more involved in the design of this book than ever before. And I can't wait for you guys to see it. We're going to be announcing all the details of our launch um, team. We're going to do a launch team for this book. It releases on November 5th. It's available for pre-order now. Um, but we're going to be doing a team, like a launch team for it. So we'll keep you posted on all of that. August 5th is when we'll be sharing all the details. So mark your, your planners for 10 a.m. Eastern time. Then um, September 4th is our launch day, but the week leading up to that, we have all kinds of fun stuff planned. So make sure that you're following us here on Facebook and Instagram. Also make sure that you're on our email list so that you can get all the freebies we send out that week. We don't send out a ton of emails um, because that's not simplified, <laughs> but we do send on the first of every month uh, the simplified post, and it's just full of information and news and freebies and fun stuff. And then on... Uh, every day during launch week, we send some kind of freebie out to everyone, a printable or a download or something like that, as well as the recording from the Facebook Live, because we know not everybody can join us every day um, in the morning. So that is going to be so much fun. I have really enjoyed doing this with you guys. I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry that the focus wasn't working. I'm going to be spending some time with my camera later to figure out why. Um, but I'm so glad we got to join each other and walk through setting everything up. I am headed to Nashville next week to record the audio version of this book and to discuss another book. 
So um, I will take you guys along with me. It's going to be, I'll be gone for a little while and I've never recorded an audio version of a book before, but I'm really excited and I'm going to be using it as a little bit of a solo vacation because uh, I get to get away all by myself for a little while. So um, I'll take you with me to Nashville and I hope you guys will mark those dates on your planners and have so much fun setting up your signature simplified planners for the next year. If you guys have questions, feel free to post them on social media to us. We're more than happy to answer them and walk you through it. Go and join the Simplified Sisterhood Facebook group too because they're awesome. Okie doke. All right, I'm out of here. Y'all have a happy Wednesday. Bye.